Okay, so I'm seeing here, um, first of all, uh, bottom of the um, fairy tarot is two of winter. Indecision is holding you back. Make the choice that's best for you rather than trying to please others. Feeling trapped between the intellectual and the emotional. Okay, so some sort of decision or choice is um, required here. Uh, this is normally the two of swords. So you're going to be weighing things up, um, you know, trying to um, decide what is the best thing to do. Um, but whatever whatever is the situation, is some sort of action is required here. So I do feel that um, um, it could very well be that you are just... Um, just feeling undecided uh, and that you can't really discern between uh, two different options. Either that or you are just overanalyzing. And, and Virgo, sometimes that can happen. You're just overanalyzing the situation. So you kind of slip into a, um, a, a, a sort of like a confusion because you can't really discern. There's too many factors um, that um, you know are clouding your vision. So uh, you know, you may just have to um, address that. Um, we'll see now as we go along here what is, um, you know, what is the situation. So for 10th house, we've got um, the world coming in. So this, the 10th house is normally to do with your career, your fame, your reputation, and in some cases, your public status. It's also about authority figures or authoritative institutions. Uh, so this can be military, it can be government or any other kind of institution which has power and authority in your life. Or you may be interacting there, you may be in there, um, or you may be going there. Uh, it just depends on how it come, you know, comes in for you. But it could also be an authoritative figure in your life. Um, and it's also about maturity and, um, and, you know, um, sort of Saturn normally rules this house. So this would be to do with, uh, your goals, your external goals, what you're reaching for. It's also can be what you're, what you admire as well, or what you are aiming for, um, out in the world. Um, something that is, is sort of you perceive to be, a um, a goal or a, or an authoritative figure that you admire and you're kind of, uh, following what's, what they say or do or, um, their career or their progress and so on. Now we've got here Black Moon Lilith Mystery underneath, and then we've got um, Yamanya Golden Opportunity. Um, so it says here, um, important doors are opening for you right now, walk through them. So I feel this is where the um, indecision may be coming in. Uh, it seems that you have got some sort of opportunity coming to you now, and um, it's going to bring a lot of joy and happiness to you, and it's coming in on the tide. So this is something that's coming straight for you. Uh, but, you know, you may just be feeling um, insecure in some way, or it could be that others um, are casting negativity on the situation. Black Moon Lilith can sometimes, there can sometimes be a, a mystery around the situation. So this can be um, something like an unknown or factors that are lurking that you're not quite sure about. Um, you just haven't got all the pieces yet, or you just there are uh, there are things mo you know moving under the surface that you can't quite put your finger on. Sometimes that can be that. It can also just be a feeling um, that you that you um, you know you haven't yet got um, all the information that you require. So as I say, take that as it resonates for you. Whether you are falling into the un the you know you're not sure you haven't got all the facts yet. Um, um, you know, or it could be that, um, you know, you need to make a decision, but you're overthinking it. So Black Moon Lilith, again, can also be um, keeping your emotions under control. So it could be you feeling um, like envious or bitter or overlooked. In some cases, you may be overlooked for a, a career promotion or something like that. Um, but I feel it's more the other way around. I feel that you are... Um, perhaps in the company of others or there are others around who are, are feeling that, are feeling a bit overlooked or um, there could be bitterness or there could be envy or there could be anger or, they, you know, all these things usually um, emanate from fear. So it could be that others feel that they have been overlooked or sidestepped or whatever the situation uh, may be. This can also bring in fame. Um, and it's coming into your fame house. So this could be that your profile is rising or you've been given an opportunity or perhaps you've been given a promotion or you're getting something. And then maybe this is the golden opportunity. You're getting something coming to you and you may just be um, on the receiving end of negativity from others. Um, some people don't like others to change. They don't like others to grow uh, because then it makes them feel 
um, inadequate in some way. So you have to rise above that. You have to ignore that and rise above it. Keep your emotions under control because this is, um, um, you know, one false move and things could go wrong. So just make sure you stay in your, you know, in, in emotional control. Um, and in some cases, it can be that you need to stand your ground on something. Um, stand firm. And, uh, you know, um, and, and I, I absolutely be very clear, uh, that th there's a boundary there and that's it. Or it may be that you need to stand up for something, uh, in order to secure something better. So see how it resonates for you. In some cases, there can be, um, issues like, um, secrets going on with this, things behind the scenes, as I said. Um, but, um, I do feel that it's about, maintaining control in a perhaps a, an emotive situation and not allowing others a negativity to um, deter you or distract you from this opportunity. So this opportunity is saying um, important doors are opening for you right now, walk through them. So you may be feeling in some way or you may be made to feel that you are inadequate in some way. But this is saying to you that you have all the skills um, necessary. You have all the wisdom, all the skills, all the experience to take up this opportunity and not to be afraid of it. All right. Take it, grasp it with both hands, take the leap, dive in and take the opportunity. Um, because it's tailor made for you. It's coming straight for you. You're ready and, and, uh, you know, you're ready for this opportunity and, um, you're in the right place at the right time and you need to take it. Um, you know, it's saying, you know, but if for some reason you should hesitate or procrastinate, you know, the opportunity will go to somebody else, basically, and then you will need to wait for the next one to come in. And this is always within divine timing. So don't let this opportunity pass you by because it's going to bring you a lot of happiness and, there are, you know, some it's some wonderful opportunity coming in for you. So as I said, there's action required here. Um, now, we do also have here the fifth house. So this is the house of creativity. Um, so um, everybody is creative. We are all born creative. Um, not all of us are artistic. Some are, some people have both abilities. Uh, but this is about your your uh, brand, your stamp, um, uh, you know, your flair, your individuality, your originality. Um, it's 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 that aspect of yourself, and this can be manifested in lots of ways. It can be with the work that you're doing or a hobby that you're interested in. Um, or it could be the way you dress or the way you conduct yourself, or you may just be a really wonderful people person and you're very creative with your um, hosting events or whatever the situation may be. Okay. It's about creativity. It is also about children. So this may be um, children that you have or children that are around you, or you may just be connecting to children or childlike things, um, possibly through the creativity or through something else that you do. Um, you may just have an affinity for children. Um, but it can also be conception, it can also be birth, um, and um, it can also be about uh, love affairs. This can come in as well, um, and it, it, it is also very much about all sorts of uh, recreational activities which are pleasurable and enjoyable for you. So any recreational activities, whatever it may be, whether it's sports um, or handcrafts um, or um, visiting art galleries, whatever recreational activity is enjoyable for you, it falls in under this. There's also a risk factor that comes in with this um with this house. So this can be to do with a profession like stock uh, market or something like that, but it can also be just something that you're weighing up has a slight risk uh, attached to it or something, um, you know, that you're doing that's out of your comfort zone. It can also be the inner child as well, accessing that. So now we've got here Mercury retrograde reinvention. As I said, this is going to be um, key for you. Uh, this period, it will be retrograde until the 22nd of June, but there's a slight shadow period afterwards because uh, Mercury slows right down to a standstill and then it um, starts to, you know, um, and, and it starts to move forward again, but um, it, it, it's slow, you know, so there's a bit of a drag. So Mercury retrograde, as I described, anything with a re in front of it, repeat, re release, review, redo, relocate, reinvent, um, anything like that, refine. Uh, it's back to the drawing board. There's something in this um, area which is requiring another look. So back to the drawing board, go over it again, check everything, check all, you know, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Um, but it can just be a period of introspection uh, where you are going over things and you're looking at things very carefully. Um, and it's a way of accessing your own inner wisdom and your own um, inner knowing uh, because it, it, it gives you the opportunity to do that. It slows 
those things down. Um, but as I said, communications can go awry. So be careful with that. Um, uh, contracts and documents, be aware um, that, you know, if you do uh, sign something, um, you know, just triple check it and do your best, the best you can to make sure it's very clear. There's no assumptions, nothing being overlooked, no mistakes or anything like that, because it can come back around where you need to repeat it um, or do something again. Um, and in some cases, it can also be like, um, you know, don't make a big purchase during this time because quite often you'll have to take it back or it doesn't work or something like that. Um, or a person or a situation can pop back into your life. Sometimes it can deliver uh, very valuable information. It could be an insight or you could just get like closure on something, um, you know, if something gets settled, um, uh, you know, any one of these aspects uh, could come in for you. Now we've got here a Nematona sacred space, create an altar um, or visit a power place uh, to connect with the divine. So this is about, as I said, with this introspective energy, this is about um, creating a space in your home or your workplace or wherever, you know, or both, uh, which you can make like an altar. Now, nobody needs to know that that is what you're doing, but you can place certain items there. You can feng shui the situation. You can place certain items, get rid of clutter and broken things and things that don't work. Um, make a space uh, where you can put candles, you can put mementos, you can put things that are valuable and, and, and important to you. It could even be pictures of your loved ones, things that symbolize abundance um, or wisdom or knowledge or whatever it may be. So create a space in your home or where you work or um, you can even go out into nature is a wonderful, the cathedral of nature, um, spend time in nature, uh, communing with uh, the divine and with mother nature. Um, it can also be um, visiting a power place like a church or an historic monument or somewhere or some part it could even be a, a part in nature a place in nature which is very old um, and has significance in some cases it can be a church um, there could be some something going in there it could be a christening that you're attending or something like that um, you know there's various ways that this can come in but um, it's about uh, creating a sacred space which is you know even if it's just a place where you have a chair and a table that you can just sit um, or any kind of um, quiet space where you can meditate and just enjoy uh, you know communing uh, with your inner self but then obviously also with nature or um, you know just to get your goals and your wants and your needs clear it's also um, you know you can also create this in nature or in your garden as well you can have a lovely place where you're planting new things um, uh, and you're nurturing and so on but it's, it's also about sacred space clearing within yourself so you can ask Archangel Michael to come in to clear your sacred space uh, to declutter and remove anything that shouldn't be there um, and you can also cut cords to people and places and things which may be draining your energy. There's lots of ways that you can uh, bring sacred space in. But if it's to do with your children, it could be that you and your children need to spend sacred time together. Um, uh, it could also be that any plans that you have, things that you're undertaking, keep it close to your chest. Um, you know, work on it privately um, and keep it um, to yourself uh, initially and then um, release it to the world later. But just keep it quiet and sacred uh, for now. So take it as it resonates. But whatever, there's something in the fifth house that needs to be kept sacred and pure and nice. And as I said, it could be to do with your children. Maybe you and your children need to do something or um, it's to do with your work or your, your just your um, some sort of activity, whatever it is. But um, it's, it's about creating um, a sacred space for yourself or just a quiet space. Okay, Virgo, I hope you enjoyed that. Please take care. Um, please don't forget to like and share or like and subscribe. Um, have a wonderful month and I will see you next time.